Look, we've got a familiar face back in the, uh, the classroom. Joe, we, we didn't run you off the first you, time? You, you couldn't shake me loose if you tried. Well, I, I don't know. I might try harder, I guess. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Next time. But uh, I'll tell you what, Joe, you sort of teased it last time we I were did. here. You talked about GPMI. So I want to start with that conversation. What do people need to know about GPMI, right. and especially in contrast to things like HDMI, and we'll get to USB here in just a second. Sure, so, so GPMI, one, once again, right, this is general purpose media interface. It is being shopped around by a conglomerate of about 50 manufacturers, Chinese manufacturers, as a replacement ultimately for HDMI. It's a truly interesting concept. And some of the things that they have promised are a new connector, and this new connector will give us a, wait for it, this is a breathtaking number, almost 200 gigabits of throughput, like 196 gigabits of throughput. It's just an insane number at 480 watts of power. So if that connector comes to be true, yeah, I mean, that's, that's Hercules level kind of stuff. Um, I think the more important thing about GPMI is there is a hedge on this bet. GPMI maps to universal serial bus, specifically USB 4 and USB type C connector. And while in that format, it utilizes the same bandwidth as USB 4, 96 gigabits per second, and the same power capabilities of USB 4, 240 watts, which is the extended power range of uh, USB 4 or type C. So probably a really good idea because starting in 2016, of course, we saw type C emerge in the marketplace, and uh, I've been completely bullish on this since. I said, this is going to change everything, and in fact, you can't get any digital device that doesn't currently have USB type C associated with it. Well, you're right, it's interesting because it's a standard much like HDMI that crosses over into the, the, the what I would say, the consumer side of the business as well. But I'm curious, obviously USB stands for universal serial bus, but any it, it feels like USB is anything but these days. I've got 14 different connectors that sort of plug oh. into different things. What can we actually uh, expect to see from USB? Maybe even a, a centralized connector. Okay, so let's start first with this, right? The U is for universal. Allegedly. And, and USB is absolutely a universal standard in how it transports audio, video, and control content, Ethernet content, between portable devices and fixed AV assets and fixed networking, networking assets. Now here's the problem with that U, with that universal. It requires that we as an industry have the expertise to be able to explain to those clients, customers, colleagues, and coworkers what this U universal means, right? And what it means is this, not every cable does everything. Not every feature is on every device. It'd be great if it was, but the reality is some of these things have been changing over time. And I'll take you to like one of my favorites is, I'm a big, I'm a Google fanboy, I'll admit it. I'm a Google fanboy, right? But the problem with the Google Pixel phones is they didn't do anything to give us a desktop experience. Samsung was absolutely crushing them on utility. And this is where this universal USB-C became a problem. Because I could take one phone and plug it in with one cable and get a picture, and I would take this ostensibly top of the line Google phone, plug it in, no picture. Well, all of these things have kind of caught up, so we're seeing more universal display port over alt mode, but it's still incumbent upon the AV professional to understand that the feature set, how it operates, is also completely dependent on the link. And if we simply let people know that, look, I wish, horrible as the HDMI marketing is, and I'm sure I'll hear about that one, right? <laughs> they have a color code, and if it's this lime green thing, okay, that's HDMI 2.1. Wouldn't it be great if USB did the same thing so you could say, you know what? I don't have a purple cable. I need the purple cable that does everything. That's where we have to be. We kind of have to look at a more practical way, but the reality is USB Type-C has become the de facto standard for connectivity for mobile devices all mobile devices, and from an AV professional's point of view, it is both the beginning and the end of the system that we create. The beginning of it, because this is where our source products plug in, and the end of it, because in many instances, these are the connections that we're going to see on anything from displays to sound bars and other devices that might be located in a conference or, or a huddle space. You know, Joe, what's interesting, we've talked about a few different standards 
And I know integrators are probably saying, look, which one do I use, where, how do I know when to use this? What advice would you give to somebody who's having to make some decisions on what sort of cable runs do I want to put in my systems? Okay, so there's a few things to think about there, right? And the way I look at it is like this. It's like peeling an onion. If you have to go really long distances and have lots and lots of layers and do lots and lots of things, the best transport system in the universe is network transport. It's all about IP transport, but it's a transport system, right? We hear AV is IT. No, it's not. IT is a highway for AV. AV is so much more than that. Now we get out from the world. Let's peel our onion, come in a little bit farther. Let's get into the building. Inside of the building, we may be on the land, but we may be within a studio or a small suite. This would be HD base T, ideal for this kind of an application. As we get down into the room and we have to get under, let's say, 30 meters of connectivity, HDMI comes into its own. But at the end of the day, HDMI does one thing. It's unidirectional for the most part, right? It's sending a signal to the display. We need something that's fully bidirectional. This is where type C really shows its stuff. And it's on everything from my bicycle helmet to my phone to the monitor that's on my desk to the docking station. And what's wonderful about it is, as AV professionals, not only do we have to think about how do we get these transport highways correctly configured so our systems will operate, but we need to think about how do we communicate to our customers and clients about a system that, you know what, the cable you're going to put in, you can't just willy-nilly take the cable that came free with a power supply, with your little charging brick, and expect it to do everything. Take a look at the capabilities and make sure that we're educating our clients to have the best possible connectivity solution because this is how we eliminate frustration or at least avoid it from the very beginning of the conversation. Well, Joe, look, these are questions that a lot of people are going to have to be asking as some of these standards are ratified and rolled out. So we appreciate you coming on and sharing your expertise on the show with us this week. My pleasure. I'll be talking about USB-C for many more years to come, so don't think this is the last time we'll talk about We're it. We're going to have you back on for sure. I'm certain of it. Joe, thank you so much again for coming on.